There are thousands of sessions in this year's ASCO meeting. Dr. Howard Burris, Editor-in-Chief of Oncology Report, highlights some of the game changers. So this year's ASCO meeting, the theme being patients, progress, and pathways, continues on the theme of moving in the direction of personalized medicine. We've talked about targeted therapies, personalized medicine, and it really comes down to delivering the right therapy to the right patient at the right time. It's clear that we're beginning to understand both the prognostic and the predictive biomarkers necessary to get the patients the best treatment for their cancer, and that's really the theme of this year's uh, ASCO meeting. Several studies that um, prove that with diligent research, excellent preclinical work, and some good targeted therapy, that we can make strides against cancers that were formerly thought to be untreatable. Take melanoma, for example. Melanoma, one of the most lethal cancers, often from the time of recurrence until a patient passes away, is really measured in months. And now we have one new therapy approved for the treatment of metastatic melanoma, ipilimumab, and a second agent, hopefully to be approved soon, Vemurafenib, which is also known as the Plexicon or Genentech compound, a BRAF inhibitor. Both of these agents are being presented in the plenary session, and both have been shown to have outstanding results in the treatment of melanoma patients. The BRAF inhibitor story is particularly unique for the treatment of melanoma. After all of these years, we've discovered that approximately half of the melanoma patients have a mutation, and this particular therapy is very effective against that mutation. Another key trial, also being presented from the Sarah Cannon Research Institute, a study we're proud of, David Spiegel is the lead investigator on, is studying a novel monoclonal antibody in the treatment of non-small cell lung cancer. Really a landmark study, although a small randomized trial, because it shows how important it is to obtain tissue from patients and assess what their status is at the time a patient goes on trial. For patients that had high expressions of MET, this marker in their lung cancer, treatment with the MET-MAB antibody improved their overall survival and their outcome. On the other hand, if you were met low, if you didn't overexpress this and you received the MET-MAB antibody, you actually did worse and appeared to have a poor outcome. So key now moving forward in the next round of trials to know this about a patient before they're entered onto the study. In the treatment of ovarian cancer, a very provocative study will be presented by Dr. Jonathan Letterman from the University College of London. Jonathan Letterman is a a medical oncologist focusing on the treatment of gynecologic tumors, and he pre he's presenting a trial that's studying one of the new agents, the PARP inhibitor, Elaparib, in women who've had good responses with their ovarian cancer and typically will have a fairly short time till they relapse. So after a woman receives her platinum-based chemotherapy, they were randomized to receive the Elaparib agent or to receive no additional therapy in a placebo-controlled fashion. And in fact, receiving the PARP inhibitor more than doubled their time to progression and showed a very promising overall outcome. The trial's preliminary, but additional follow-up and larger trials should in fact be very encouraging for using this agent in women with ovarian cancer. One of the agents that was particularly exciting at last year's ASCO that we'll get additional follow-up information on is Aniparib from Sanofi or Bipar Sciences. Aniparib, previously thought to be a PARP inhibitor, now not so certain as to what its mechanism of action is, is presenting results in several different cancers at this year's meeting, breast cancer, non-small cell lung cancer, and ovarian cancer. The positive results in ovarian cancer and platinum sensitive patients, a marked improvement in response rate, more than 70% of the patients uh, responding to the addition of aniparib with gemcitabine and carboplatin. In non-small cell lung cancer, some encouraging results both with the combination of gemcitabine and carboplatin as well as the treatment that's standard taxol and carboplatin. And those are preliminary phase two results. This year we'll also hear the final phase three results from Dr. O'Shaughnessy on the large randomized pivotal trial for aniparib. This was a breast cancer study in triple negative patients, gemcitabine and aniparib or gemcitabine alone. And disappointingly, there was no overall difference in the two results. My understanding is that the subset shows some very interesting trends and it might just need to be that we reassess how we dose and deliver aniparib for women with triple negative breast cancer. 
Also, as part of this year's plenary session, pediatric malignancies are uh, given uh, some positive results from two very important trials. Children's uh, tumors r remain important, often thought of uh, too late in terms of applying new therapies, but we see results on furthering the treatment of neuroblastoma as well as childhood leukemia. The interest in pediatric oncology is continuing to grow, and we're certainly trying to encourage pharma biotech to invest in this area. This next year, ASCO actually have a pediatric oncologist as the president of the society. That'll be Dr. Michael Link. So that should certainly further the enthusiasm around pediatric malignancies and hopefully advance research in that area.